Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, MLB slate. A uh, very, very big slate tonight, and there's a lot going on uh, this weekend in DFS, and I'll be here to kind of try to cover all of it. Um, pretty, as I said, pretty busy weekend uh, between MMA, NASCAR, the various pieces of NASCAR, baseball, and things like that. Not to mention football on Sunday. Um, we'll be we'll be there to take care of all of this. Um, so we're going to go game by game, even though it's a full 15 game slate. Um, and then I'll kind of summarize what I'm thinking. So right off the bat, you have uh, Jesus Lazardo against Josiah Gray, Miami against Washington. And I, I have uh, Josiah Gray as one of my, uh, let's say top options. I mean, he's, um, I guess that actually is fair to say. I mean, I, I have the way I have these guys ranked. I have five kind of that stand out a little bit, and then I have one, two, three, four. Then I have a whole bunch that that are right below us. You know that, that you can play, and there are guys that I'm passing on that are probably pretty good plays. Um, it would seem that way, but they're just not showing up for me in that way. Um, but Josiah Gray at 7,600 uh, against Miami has definitely a decent amount of upside. And there are going to be some bats on the slate that you want to pay up for. And I think this is a very, very strong play. Um, he's going to be probably somewhat low owned, especially if you're going to play constructions where you double pay down for pitcher. Um uh, there are people that are going to play Verlander alongside of him or Snell alongside of him, but I don't know how many people are going to play him alongside of another um, mid range or, or cheap guy. So I, I think Josiah Gray right off the bat is probably a very strong GPP play. Um, uh, Lusardo is not really making the list for me today. Remember it's 15 games. So just because someone's not making the list doesn't mean they're not, you know, going to show up in a in 150, but I don't think I'm going to get much if any Lusardo. With respect to the hitting, um, I actually do have both of these teams as one of the four value stacks that you can play. Now, again, I don't think you have to um, play these types of stacks today, but if you play kind of a five-man from one of the more expensive teams and you want to fill it in, I think that both of these teams are viable. Um, as a matter of fact, as I mentioned, I do have – those guys rated as second and third as far as best values go. Um, let me see. Um, let me see. With respect to which guys I would use, I think for Miami it would be uh, Blade. Let me see this. It would be Blade. That's what I like to do. If I, if I actually do highlight a team, I want to at least say who I'd like to play. There'd be Blade, uh, maybe Cooper, Blade, Cooper, uh, maybe Brian Anderson. These would be the, I guess, the top guys that have a decent blend of upside and value. Um, Birdie's probably a little bit too expensive, but these would be the three guys that would be my main value pieces for Miami. And if you play the Washington side, we'd be looking at uh, Luke Voigt. Let's pull this in here. You'd be looking at Luke Voigt at 2,900. You'd be looking at um, Nelson Cruz at 2,700 if he gets in. Wow, imagine that. He's 2,700. And then I would have my next guy would be Lane Thomas. He would be kind of the next guy. So right off the bat, I think I think you can get some action out of both these teams, uh, especially with mini stacks. Um, and uh, and I definitely like the Josiah Gray side. All right, now we go ahead to Baltimore against Toronto, and we have Lyles versus. It looks as though we're going to get Hatch from Toronto. Um, currently, I'm not getting to either of these pitchers, but what I'm certainly getting uh, to is some Toronto hitting. Um, it's always Jordan Law is always someone you want to attack, and Toronto is uh, usually a pretty good team to to attack with. 
So Toronto is definitely one of the, one of those, I think I have like four kind of expensive teams that I, I, I'm considering and they're certainly one of them. So as I said, when I actually do highlight a team, I will talk about this, the guys that I would use from there. So I would say uh, it would be Guerrero. Then it would be um, Springer maybe. And again, if you've used Saber Sim or whatever, you, they'll, they'll build these for you. But if you just want to hand build and you want to know who to play, um, who else would be my favorites? Biggio, Espinal would be value, Tapia, Springer. That would be like the, I don't want to give you the full five man, but, but, but you could play a five man. And what you would do is you would probably play these three as your core. Actually, who would be Guerrero, Springer? Those two would be your core. And then it depends on whether you wanted to pay up. You could pay up. You could play Bichette, Kirk, and Chapman. Or if you wanted to pay down, you could play Espinal and, and, and Tapia. Um, I think that um, I think that both of those are uh, – I think all those are good options. I think Lyles can get really touched up in this, uh, in this game. Um, Baltimore, I'm really not getting to, um, today. I don't know who this hatch guy is. Um, so it's possible that Baltimore could become in play as we get a little closer and get more information. But for now, it's just for me, it's, it's just the Toronto side of this. And I do have them as one of the, one of the four main stacks I'm looking at. All right. Um, Minnesota against Cleveland, you have, uh, Bailey Ober against Tristan McKenzie. And while there have been slates where Tristan McKenzie has been in play, I think that he's is at best a secondary option on today's slate. So I'm not going to really get to him. And quite honestly, I'm really not getting to any of the hitting either. Um, you know, you have 15 games, you can't play everybody. So again, just to kind of summarize, I am going to, I am going to highlight, you know, four main stacks and four value stacks. Um, and this is just not going to, you know, be in any of them. So. Uh, this game is just going to be a pass. Um, Texas and Tampa. Uh, you know, for lack of, you know, a better description, I don't have anything from this game either. Um, I will say that Kluber is at least a secondary pitching option. I have other guys around the same price tag, starting with Josiah Gray, that I like better. But I do have Kluber as at least a secondary pitching option, and he's going to be lower owned than some of these others. Perez, I'm really not getting to at all. And I'm really not getting to any of the hitting here, whether it be for value or as a main stack. So for me, I would consider Kluber a secondary option. And uh, that's pretty much it. Kansas City at Boston. You have Waka against Heasley. Um, Hazley, in either case, not getting to either of these pitchers. But both of these teams are showing up as, as priorities as far as the hitting goes. I have Boston currently rated as one of the top overall stacks. And I actually do have Kansas City as rated the number one value stack, at least for so far. So let's go ahead and, and, and insert some players there. Let's start with the, um, you know, we'll start with the Kansas City side. I mean, you're probably going to want to play. Well, let's let's start with Pasquantino. We'll get to the other guys in a minute, but Pasquantino is a flat 2K, and he makes certainly a great amount of sense. And another value guy, you have Nick Prado, but he's also first base, so that's the problem. Pasquantino and Prado, you can't play them both. Uh, but either one of those, you probably want to use one of them, uh, obviously. I mean, but I would use one of them, in, especially in game stats. Uh, and then it really does depend on whether you want to pay up or not. I mean, you could play, uh, whatchamacallit, either or. I mean, you could play Perez and Melendez, kind of go double catcher without realizing it. Uh, you could play Bobby Witt. Play Bobby Witt. But the reason why this, but this game stands out more for the, for the value pieces. So, Let's let's throw in Hunter Dozier. He's super cheap at twenty four hundred. So th these would really be the guys: the Pasquantino, Dozier, even you know my hero Michael Taylor. He's still twenty six hundred. 
So I think you could play a bunch of these Kansas City guys um, and be well within your rights. Now, on the other side, you have the more expensive but but extremely strong Boston stack. So let's go ahead and just, you know, highlight who I'd want to play from there. And you have Devers as a relatively cheap 5,200. You have Bogarts, pretty fairly priced at 5,300. You have Fam at 4,600. You have Alex Verdugo, flat 4K. And then probably expensive uh, it's Trevor Story. Let's see what he's trading at, so to speak. We have Trevor Story's day-to-day. Um, uh, it says he will likely return today. So let's throw him in at 5,100. So that's what you would want to do is you want to pay up for these Boston guys. And as you'll see, if you do double, double pay down a pitcher, you can, you can get to that pretty easily. So that's, is what I would recommend is to is to spend up and, and take a shot at those Boston guys. All right. Uh, Pittsburgh versus the Mets. You have Taiwan Walker against Mitch Keller. Um, I've, I've, I've been pretty good about identifying kind of fraudulent Mets value. Um, and, and Peterson the other day was one of them. And it's to Taiwan Walker. I have him rated as the, as the second overall play on the board at pretty reasonable ownership. So I don't know, maybe this is something where you really have to um, take a look at the ownership as we get closer, because if he is low owned, yeah. Okay. But I have a feeling that he's not going to be particularly low owned. So um, he does rate second best value. Um, but if he is really 20%, I just find that there are better options. Uh, and Mitch Keller, no thanks. With respect to the hitting, not really getting to either the Pirates or the Mets. So um, we can just kind of move on. All right, so Detroit against uh, Chicago. Uh you have another opportunity to play Lucas Giolito. So he's been showing up as, as top values or one of the top values for pretty much the whole season. Um, because for the, you know, last more last year, he had a lot of strikeout upside, you know? So every week, you know, no matter what his price, he gets owned. And, and I've got to, got to keep it real. He hasn't done anything. I mean, and he's had good matchups. He had Kansas City. He had Oakland. I mean, he really just, and he hasn't really had pitched over hundred pitches in like a while. Um, I mean, it's kind of a lemon, you know, and, and, and he's going to get really owned. You want to know why? Cause he has a matchup, right? He's against the Tigers. Um, and, and this is really going to be the end. You know, if he can't get there against the Tigers who are just literally the worst team against righties, I mean, you really can't play him again, and I, and I kind of, I kind of want to get ahead of the curve and not play him here. Um, I think he's going to be popular. I think he's going to be the popular SP two. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I, it, it's, uh, I've had very, very good luck fading him, and and, and I, I think I'm just going to keep doing it. I mean, until until he puts together a game that I don't know. I mean, I want at least some, you know some signs of life. I mean, even that occasional ceiling game hasn't really come in. So I don't know. Something just seems off. I'm, I'm probably going to stay off him despite the fact that he is rated kind of like the third top value. So um, we'll, we'll revisit that as we get, you know, we do the live show, but I think this, this could end up being, being kind of a cool fade. Um, Matt Manning. I just, not quite going to do it uh, on a smaller slate. I can make a case at 6,200, especially considering that, you know, the white Sox are usually pretty poor against righties. He really doesn't project anything close. So I just can't up the guy that much to loop 20 other pitchers as, as options. So um, for me, it's going to be, look, Giolito is going to be in my pool, but I don't know. I mean, I'm probably going to get underweight on him at the end of the day. Philadelphia and Atlanta. All right. Here. Oh, and, oh, and by the way, hitting wise, uh, let me just make sure. Yeah. I wasn't getting to any of the hitting between the White Sox and the Tigers either. Philly against Atlanta. Um, as far as pitching goes, I have Max Freed as as a secondary option, and it really is a secondary option. 
I mean, he just never seems to have the strikeouts in his profile needed to boost his projection to a point where I can play him at this price. So I'm just going to continue to just probably not play him, especially on a big slate. Um, on small slates, sometimes you just kind of want those 20 fantasy points that he usually gets, but it's not as if he, they have the, he has an easy matchup here either. So I'm going to fade him. And Ranger Suarez, again, he's just not showing up for me. Uh, on a smaller slate against a better opponent or a weaker opponent, uh, you could play him, but not really at 9K either. So none of this game is good for me, and neither of the sides of hitting as well. So you have Houston at Oakland, and that is Verlander against Martinez. And obviously the, the big question is, what kind of leash does Justin Verlander have? Um, he is coming off 15 day DL and let me just see if there's any wrote to any, any notes. There's just no notes about his, any pitch count or whatever it is. But the, the good thing is that it wasn't his arm that was hurting. It was his calf. So I'd like to think that he's just kind of going to let it go. And, and, and not only that, but he's got an easy matchup. So. Uh, I definitely think that 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 Verlander is a very legit, you know, um, SP one at even at 11k. Now again, it makes life a little harder to get these big, you know, these big price stacks you're in. But but listen, all you really need is one kind of lower price guy like a Josiah Gray or a Giolito or a Taiwan Walker, and then you can make the rest of it work. You know, so I think Verlander is perfectly reasonable. Um, I wouldn't overthink it and, and probably play him. Um, unless you hear actual news that he's going to have a pitch count. Uh, hitting wise, uh, since I mentioned it, Houston is another one of the teams that I have rated as a top, just kind of raw points stack. The problem is, is, you know, it's going to be tough to get to these guys. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty expensive. Let me go through the prices to, to kind of show you. Um, so you have Altuve, who is 6K, you have Alvarez, who's 5,900. You have Bregman, who is 5,700. You have Tucker, who's 5,600. Then you have Mancini, who is 4,300. So it becomes very difficult to play these Houston guys. Um, well, you can't play them with Verlander, right? Well, the only thing I you could do is maybe, you know, maybe replace something like a, a Chas McCormick at 2,800, with you know one of these guys even and maybe that's even enough it's still you have to kind of do some work here uh, i think that if you're going to play the houston's that's when you have those builds where you have the double the double pay downs um and i'm probably going to get some of that um but that's definitely uh, the only way you're going to be able to play them is if you don't play berlin right yankees against milwaukee you have montas against hauser um okay. I have Montas as a very fringe secondary play at pitcher. Um, I have him kind of ranked 10th overall. So I don't I mean he's gonna be low owned, so they have that going for them, but I don't know uh if I'm gonna be able to get to that. And no thanks to Adrian Hauser. What what's interesting to me is that I thought the Yankees were going to show up as a very strong stack, but for whatever reason, they're not. I, I, you know what I think it is? I think that the lineup outside of Judd's is just is just not great. You know, you're going to have – look at all this IL. Carpenter, Rizzo, LeMayhew, and, and Ben Attendee all in the IL. I mean, after, you know, Judge and Stanton, I mean, what do you got? You know? Um, so while Hauser, you can touch him up a little bit. I don't – I'm just not getting to the – I'm just not getting enough of a projection on the Yankees to make it work. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, I have them, I have them below the Mets. I have them below uh, another team we're going to get to. So I'm probably not going to get to the Yankees today. All right, moving along. Cincinnati against St. Louis, San Martin versus Flaherty. So Flaherty is the guy that I have as the number one uh, overall value on the slate. Um, and it is a little scary because he's basically done nothing the whole season. Um, he didn't get his first start till the 15th, did nothing, did nothing, did nothing. 
Then he took two months off, came back, had a reasonable performance, but not really. He gave up six hits in five innings against the worst team in baseball and then got pretty well handled by Pittsburgh en route to a .8 fantasy point production. I mean, ouch. It's tough, man. Um, I guess this is why I think Giolito is going to be low owned at the end. I don't, I don't know. Um, Flaherty, Walker, Giolito, Gray. I mean, all these guys, I have them rated as you know, top four value. They all have a lot of fleas, you know. Um, maybe, just maybe, Kluber is going to move up into that main main realm of these 7,400s because, I mean, look at this line score. I mean, it's you, you, this is bad. So I don't know. I mean, look, you got Cincinnati, so that maybe that'll to get right performance. But he's got nothing but good matchups the whole season. Two Pittsburghs, a Washington, a Cubs, and one at Milwaukee, and he's got nobody out. And he's got five walks, four walks. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about this. Currently, it does rate as top value, but I might end up looking for something different. Uh, San Martin definitely has talent, um, but. Uh, not today and not against all these righties. As a matter of fact, I do think that St. Louis rates to be an extremely strong player. Um, they're not one of my top four ranks. I remember, remember I mentioned there were four. One was Boston, one was Houston, one was Toronto, another we'll get to in a minute. But now that I'm really thinking about it, I think I am going to boost St. Louis to that top tier. You get a little bit of an ownership break on them. And you get access to all of this stuff uh, for St. Louis. That being, um, you know, a pretty expensive, very expensive, uh, Paul Goldschmidt at 6,200. Then you're going to get a couple of values. You get Newt Bar. He's okay at 3,500. Arianato is pretty expensive, I guess, at 5,500. Then there's, you could play, you could play, uh, you could play pool holes. But you can't because of Goldschmidt, right? Deluzio, Molina, Edmund, maybe. I mean, it depends how much you want to spend, but all these guys are in play because like these are all righties. So um in this case, maybe you pair St. Flaherty with them because if they do hit it, hit the ball, then then it's likely that 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 Flaherty gets the leash and he gets, you know, he gets the win. So I do actually really like seeing St. Louis tonight. Okay, moving along, Seattle against the Angels. Um, so you have Robbie Ray, um, who's 9,800, and and I'm not I'm not getting too much of him in my projections. I'm just gonna say, I mean, things could change. Maybe you know, update a couple of models and think he'll look different. But right now, he's just not there for me, and I can't imagine why. I mean, he always has that upside, um, but right now he's just not projecting into the into the into the board for me. So I'm not gonna have him. I'm not going to have Lorenz. And what I might consider, though, is Seattle as a very secondary, but I think playable stack. So I mentioned I had four about four regular stacks and four values. Seattle is that value, other value stack that I would consider. So let's um take a look and see where this is coming from here. Let's take a look at who I'd be taking from the Seattle in that. All right, so obviously we'd be starting with Jesse Winker, I believe, being a lefty. Um, and then depending on who starts at catcher, uh, I'd probably play him. Him, uh, You have either Cal Raleigh. I always like playing Cal Raleigh. And then there's Haggerty. If we can get him at the outfield for 2K. That's very strong. Then you get Ty France. I like that. Uh, these are the main guys that I, that I would that I would go after. Um, and Hanniger, I don't know if he's playing. That's the problem with Hanniger. I just don't know if he's actually going to play. And I don't think I'd play him coming off of an injury at 4,700 um, against the righty. Anyway. Uh, and Rodriguez is righty too. So I would start with these lefties, switch hitting um, Raleigh. And then you get Haggerty, Winker, and France. And France is a righty as well, but he's only 3,600. Um, 
And I'm really not getting to the Angels against Robbie Ray. Uh, San Diego against Arizona. So you have Blake Snell against Arizona. And, and Blake Snell is, you know, he's just not showing up for me as a top play. For me, he's kind of in that second group. Uh, and I imagine he's going to get owned. I mean, he always does. But listen, Arizona has been tough. And Snell doesn't project all that great. I would, um, I don't know. I, uh, he's fine. Second Secondary option for me. I think you certainly make the case that in lineups that don't have Verlander, you could probably try it. But I, you know, just to give you some context, I have Giolito and, and, and Taiwan Walker and Jack Flaherty projected for more raw fantasy points than, than Snell. I just can't play him with that with that staring me in the face. So and Bum Gardner, no thanks. Uh and with respect to hitting, uh, when I said no thanks, that was obviously from the pitching side. The hitting side, we could certainly play uh, San Diego guys against the pod, uh, against Bumgarner, and that is the other uh, main stack that I'd be looking at. So let me take a look at the guys you'd want to use from uh, San Diego, and this should come as no surprise. We'd be playing uh, Manny Machado. We'd be playing Juan Soto. Um, I don't obviously I don't care lefty lefty in this particular situation. Uh, Josh Bell, and then maybe Hassan Kim. So that's that's probably be my top four maybe, um, and I think they're a very strong stop. Uh, and again, nothing on the Arizona side. And the final game of the day, you have uh, Logan Webb versus Dustin May, and, and neither of them are showing up for me as, as 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 a good pitching option. And Logan Webb is just good enough to keep me off of the Dodgers tonight. Um, so that's going to pretty much do it for that and pretty much do it for this overall slate. So let me just kind of review um, what I like going into, you know, going in. And we're going to go live at 6 o'clock and go through all this. But I do like Boston, Houston, Toronto, and San Diego as kind of spend-ups. And as far as value stacks, I like Kansas City, Miami, Washington, and and Seattle. And with respect to the pitching, I think, I think I'm just inclined to play it safe um, if I can and go with Verlander. Uh, it's certainly over <laughs> Snell and Ray. And then – I have these 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 four mid range pitching options to consider between Flaherty, Walker, Giolito, and, and Gray. Maybe at the end of the day, if, if ownership is pure, I mean it's not that bad. I will just go back to Giolito. The, the, for whatever reason, the Flaherty play just kind of scares me. Oh, the other up uh, by the way, the other stack I said in St. Louis. I apologize. So it's going to be probably one of those, uh, or maybe Kluber. So for me, it's going to be either Verlander with Flaherty, Walker, Giolito, Gray. Uh, Kluber or some mix of those two cheap of those cheapos in spend up lineups at six o'clock. We're going to be going over this uh, live and uh, uh, hopefully you're there for that. Um, that'll do it.